Welcome back everybody. Here we are in our next video on solutions. Now we're going to talk about the different ways you can measure the concentration of a solution. And I'm going to admit this isn't going to be terribly interesting. We're going to go through about six different types of composition or concentration measurements and it's not going to be very exciting. But it is very important. You can't do any solution chemistry unless you know how much stuff you have in your solution. And there are different ways to describe the amount of stuff, so you have to make sure you can do this stuff. Also, you have to make sure that you can go from one concentration type to another, do sort of a solution concentration conversion type of process, and that's something that we're going to practice in class. So, as you can see over here, I've got six different ways of determining solution comp concentration. Let's go through them one by one and I'll explain each one. A few of these I think you're going to know already but we'll just add some detail. Molarity, also abbreviated with a uppercase M, okay, capital M, molarity. You've seen this one before, I know you've seen it plenty of times in freshman and certainly in sophomore chemistry. Molarity of course is the uh, moles of the solute divided by the liters of the solution. Okay, now remember you've got two parts to a solution. You've got the solvent and the solute, and the solute is the thing that dissolves into the solvent. So there are usually more moles of solvent than there are moles of solute. All right, so that's molarity. Go ahead, figure out how many grams of your solute you have, use the molar mass of the solute, get the moles, divided by the liters of solution, done. Nothing fancy, you've seen this one before. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get this guy out of our way. Next one, we have molality. Now, it kind of sounds like I tried to say molarity and I just messed it up, so it's molality, and to make it more confusing, it's abbreviated with a lowercase m. Now, molality has a slightly different um, denominator. The uh, numerator is the same. We're still looking at the moles of solute. But now our denominator is going to be kilograms of solvent. So there are two changes here in the denominator. We've gone from a volume liters in molarity to a mass kilograms. And in molarity, it was the liters of the whole solution. And here in molality, it's just the kilograms of only the solvent. Now, there's a reason why we've made these changes. And each of these different composition types, each, each of these different ways of measuring solution, are going to have an application later on in the unit. And molality definitely has an application when we get to talking about these ideas of colligative properties that I referred to in the previous video. So we'll come back to this, but just recognize numerator's the same, denominator different. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that guy, get rid of my little... Uh, drawing there. We don't need that there. Go away drawing. Okay, maybe you won't go away. All right, maybe I'll erase you. Okay, so let's get our molality out of the way. Next, mass percent. Okay, you've done mass percent plenty of times before. Okay, this is going to be the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution, everything together, and since it's a percent, we're going to multiply it by a hundred, okay? We could also do volume percent, right? I could have the volume of the solute, if it's a liquid, divided by the volume of the solution times a hundred to get volume percent. Same idea. So you've seen mass percent before, don't think we need to spend a lot of time on it, so let's get mass percent out of our way. Next is one that I don't think you've seen before. It's called weight by volume percent. And so this one has some similarities to mass percent, but we're going to have um, some specifics here. In the numerator, we are going to have the mass of the solute, but one particular point is we want to measure that mass in grams. And we're going to divide it by the volume of the solution 
and that's going to be measured in milliliters, ml, that's a milliliter there, okay? Now, weight by volume percent is used a lot in um, consumer products. If you look on the back of uh, detergents, sometimes you'll see different percentages of materials there, and those are often uh, mass uh, by volume percent or weight by volume percent. This is handy because you don't need to know the molar mass of anything to calculate this. You just need the mass of your solute divided by the total volume of solution in grams and milliliters respectively. So you don't have to do a lot of calculations to go ahead and determine uh, this particular type of, um, of concentration. And it works really well you know, if you're adding simply uh, solids to uh, liquids. All right, so that's weight by volume percent. Next, mole fraction, and that's uh, an attempt at putting in a Greek letter chi, that, you know, sort of chi letter there. Um, so this is mole fraction. Now, mole fraction is actually a unitless number. So mole fraction, chi, is always defined with respect to one component of the solution. And so I'm going to write it with respect to the component I'll just call A. So the mole fraction of A is going to be equal to the moles of A divided by the total moles I have throughout the solution. So if I have two things, if I have just A and B, then I'll have the mole fraction of A divided by the mole fraction of A plus B to get my mole fraction of A. Now you'll notice here, since I've got moles on the numerator and moles in the denominator, the units would cancel out and this would be a unitless number, okay? And it's also reported as the decimal. So mole fractions are always going to be point something, all right? Um, the sum of all the individual mole fractions, right, if you think this through, the sums of the mole fraction throughout the solution, they're going to have to add up to one, right, because everything is kind of like, it's like a probability really, right? What's the probability of bumping into this particular material in the solution? So when you add up all these mole fractions, you have to get to unity, you have to get to one, right? And mole fraction is gonna have a particular application for a particular property we're gonna discuss later, okay? So that's mole fraction. Let's see if I can shrink these down here. Get mole fraction out of my way which leaves us with normality, which is kind of a funny sounding term, I admit. It almost sounds like we're measuring, I don't know, mental health or something like that. It's kind of funny sounding, but normality. Now, normality looks an awful lot like molarity, okay? We're gonna have moles in the numerator, except it's moles of a particular part. It's gonna be what I'm gonna call the moles of the reactive species divided by the liters of the solution okay and it's abbreviated as you can see there with a capital M now what do I mean by reactive species okay let's take a specific example here let's look at I'm gonna make an acid solution using HCl now, so I get some concentrated HCl and I dissolve it up in some water to make a dilute solution of HCl. Now, in the context of acid-base chemistry, what's the business end of HCl? What part do I really care about? What I really care about is, of course, the H, right? The H plus that's going to be in that solution. So the normality of an HCl solution would be the moles of H plus divided by the liters of solution. Now, the normality for HCl would be the same as the molarity of HCl because for every mole of HCl I have, I have one mole of H. So a one molar solution would be also a one normal solution. Gets a little different if I talk about the acid, say, H2SO4, okay? H2SO4 has the capacity to bring not one, but two moles of H plus to the solution. So if I have a one molar H2SO4 solution, its normality will be two because I have two moles of H plus, which is the reactive species within the context of acid-base chemistry. So normality is a way of figuring out the moles of the actual part of the solution you might care about within your chemistry. I couldn't care less about the Cl minus uh, of HCl 
if I'm doing acid-base chemistry. I couldn't care about the SO4 to minus if I'm doing uh, acid-base chemistry. So normality, very much like molarity, but with paying closer attention to the business end, the reactive species that's in solution. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six different ways of measuring solution composition. We're going to go ahead and practice with these different types of solutions in class. And in particular, what, we're, what we'll do is I'll give you one solution type, and you have to be able to convert it to the others, a solution conversion type problem. All right? Uh, we'll see you in class, and we'll see you in the next video.